Hi, everyone. <laughs> I am so excited because I am speaking with author Catherine McKenzie again. I always get so happy to speak with you, Catherine. When one of your books comes out, I get very excited, just so you know. I'm like, well, thank you. I'm excited to be here again. Again, six weeks to live. Love the cover so much. Oh, it's good, right? Oh, so much. And I only had it on my phone, but I found myself so many times like going and looking at it as I'm reading, because I like to do that. I'm a cover person and I'm like, ooh, are there any hints on the cover? I look at that. <laughs> I'm like, maybe there's something on the cover she didn't tell us. <laughs> but this I, is I don't think I have any books where there's a hint on the cover. I think no, about it. No, I know some people do. You know, just a little something. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe next time. I'll think about that for next time. Right? But this is, I could not believe this. This is your 11th book. I know, that, crazy. That is It so, is crazy. Yeah. Because I think you're so young. I'm like, how'd she do that? Was she like <laughs> waiting to a year or something? I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look so young. And I, I read half of them. So, I, you know, I looked awesome. at him and I was like, oh, well, there we go. There's an assignment. Maybe I should <laughs> read the rest of them because I obviously, never, obviously, <laughs> because I love your book so much. But this one, oh, gosh, I spent two days, like I told you before, I watched you and I'm reading it and I'm like the anticipation. This is one of those books. And these are kind of like how all your books are to me. Is like the way you build the suspense. Nothing is happening and everything is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I find. I'm like, okay, this is just a book about a family and, and it's a mom and a dad and a set of triplets. And, and yes, the dad leaves and we aren't giving away spoilers because this happens at the beginning of the book. All the first chapter, yeah. <laughs> All the first chapter stuff. And, but he leaves and you're like, okay still normal, right? Like we've had that. We have dad's leave. <laughs> Nothing going on. Yes, there's the triplets and, and that's unique in its own way. But this book just keeps you going. And cause you're like, okay, when, 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 when we find more, okay, <laughs> when is it going to find something else out? So I'm going to let you tell us what you want to tell us. And then I know how far to go with this because I know spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. Well, so six weeks to live is about a woman um, who's diagnosed uh, with terminal cancer and given six weeks to live, but she also discovers that she might have been poisoned a year earlier. And so she sets out to figure out who may have tried to kill her before she dies. Right away. Like you're like, what? And then, and then the triplets, I love that it wasn't twins. I've read a lot of books with twins. First of all, I love sisters fiction. And I saw that Amazon put this in that category. So I was really- yeah, It's also in like women's divorce fiction. It always fascinates me, the, car the, <laughs> the like, categories. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and my friend, Alyssa Friedland, whose book came out yesterday, last summer at the Golden Hotel, is also in women's divorce fiction. I like, if there's the word divorce in the book and a woman, did they just put it in there anyway? I always want to know if there's a guy who writes, do we know any men who write books about divorce and do their books get put in divorce? Oh, a good question. You know what I do? So actually Matt Norman's book um, okay. uh, just came out in paperback. It's not the title of his new book in my head. Anyway, I'll think of it in a second, but that's about a group of friends where there's a bunch of divorces and the cup, oh, last couple standing. So, I, but I never checked if that was categorized in, is it categorized in men's divorce fiction? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they always want, it's like the women's divorce. Like we need, we need our own category of divorce. Yeah. Or, or, or women are responsible for divorces or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, or we are not just responsible, but like have a hard time handling them. Then, yeah, exactly. Right. Like we just can't handle it. So <laughs> obviously, we, you know, obviously we just need our, but okay. So I don't have a sister. So of course I love sisters fiction. I have daughters who are sisters, but I love the dynamic. And so with the three of them, so interesting. Tell us how you like decided that, that it, they weren't gonna be twins. There was gonna be three and they were gonna be um, Yeah, so I know someone who has um, triplet girls who are two identical twins and a fraternal twin and they're eight years old. So they're not the, uh, they're the inspiration, but obviously the, the characters aren't based on them because they're eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. uh, but just when I when I met this woman who was also an author um, and I learned that she had these triplets I was just kind of fascinated by the configuration of the triplets and it was always in the back of my mind I think of just how interesting that could be to explore in a book 
Um, and I often get little pieces of things like that, you know, um, and that at some point I'll find a book to sort of conglomerate and, and put those pieces together. So when I was coming up with this premise, you know, I, I always think of the first, the premise first, and then I think of the main character and then I try and think about, okay, well, why, why would they be in that situation? You know, how, how could this be and who would it be? And so I decided to make it you know, a family drama, which is not something that I've done that often. And I think I just had the idea at that point to say, oh yeah, okay, let's, let's use these triplets and give her these adult triplets and go from there. And, and then honestly, after that, I, I don't, I don't always like exactly know how I get from that sort of starting point to the end, because a lot of that just happens as I'm writing. It just comes out. And yeah. 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 And you know, my subconscious has been working on or continues to work you know, when I'm writing something, it's working on pieces of the story. And I can often, I, I liken it to a map it's sort of like I can see pieces of the map open up ahead of what I'm writing so it's like I can look ahead and be like okay I see a little more of the map I'm in the beginning stages of a novel right now and you know I have like 60 pages and I'm like okay I know the next couple of chapters are I can see the map and it's just going to grow you know from there so yeah and we have okay two of the sisters which I didn't say are um identical, identical twins yes and we have yes. the fraternal older right she, was she the older one, right? She's so, the oldest one, yeah. Yeah, she's like the oldest and then the two, which it was kind of interesting, kind of interesting dynamic between them because right. even as a triplet, she kind of feels like they are closer than her. Yeah, I mean, I think naturally, you know, I think a lot of emphasis is put on identical twins and how they're so similar and how they must be able to communicate. And we have all these weird mysticism about identical twins, right? They somehow have ESP and all, you know, things that probably don't exist and they probably don't actually have. And and um, so I, I, I thought it'd be so interesting to have somebody in that dynamic where, you know, not only is she fraternal, but she really doesn't look like them. But I also know twins. I went to, to junior college with twins who looked nothing alike. They were fraternal and they didn't even look like sisters, frankly. That always interested me too, because people would meet them and never think that they were a twin, you know? So I, know. I, I just sort of melded those two dynamics. Yeah, it is very interesting because I do know fraternal sisters, twins, and then I know identical. And right. I think like, oh, it's such a different dynamic because when you're looking at somebody that looks like you and is part, you know, but as opposed to these two that didn't look anything alike and were, you know, so completely different, even personality wise, it's, it is just very, it was so interesting how you put it all together, you know, so we have the identical and then we have the fraternal, but even their relationships and secrets, who was, who knew what, and who, you know, it was like, I, yeah. I was thinking about you. And I always think about the author when I'm reading, because I do. And I'm like, how did she figure that out? This, you know, like who was going to get to right. know her and then who, and then the mom. Well, that I, yeah, that mom. I decided at the beginning. Yeah. The mom on top of it, like as a mom, you know, and you're trying to like fit into these three, uh, I was, I was like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> children are difficult enough, you know, to, adult children, I should say, come with their own set of challenges that you just never realize. Right. I mean, right. You, know, you can sympathize with the moms that have the babies, but I'm on the other end where my children have babies and try, and that's where she was. So I very much identified with her trying to have a relationship with each one of her daughters. Right. And well, and I think also, you know, she's, she's moved into a different phase of her life. Everyone's out of the house, including her husband. And so she's trying to navigate, you know, what the rest of her life is going to look like. And, and, and then this clock gets put on it. Yes. Yes. Oh, anyway, you have to read it, everybody. I mean, seriously, <laughs> it is so good. But I, I know, right? Uh, the blue, I love the blue background. Like I just, my eye yeah. goes to that. Well, it's, it's cool that what I have here is actually the Canadian version and the water droplets are actually raised when you oh. touch it, which is, you can sort of see them glinting there, which is very cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to book. I mean, as soon as I can get it. <laughs> I, I've been collecting books since pandemic, like so I, you would think I'd stop, but no, I just keep buying bookshelves. I just can't, <laughs> I can't stop. Looks like you got some room behind you for more, so you're good. I do. I have all around me, I have room. But I want to talk about, because I saw some exciting news that I didn't, I had heard a little bit about, but now I think you can tell us about You Can't Catch Me. Isn't there news about that? I, I mean, it's been option for a TV show um, and that's where things are right now. So how <laughs> exciting, I mean, once that happens, does it, are you like working on that? And then what, do you continue to work on writing more books? I mean, or does it take you out of that writing? Uh, 
Uh, no, I mean, um, you know, usually in those situations, I hire a writer to adapt the book. And, you know, I'm, I'm kept informed about what's going on. And if, if it actually gets made into a show, I might have a bigger role to play. But it depends. Every situation for every writer is different where, where that's right. concerned. It's super exciting. It would be great if it happened. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. <laughs> but is it like, I've heard, um, I, I was watching James Patterson talk about like some of his books that have gone. Right. And he said, it's kind of like this same thing as a child that you have to let go. Because, Definitely. Because if you hold on to, because I guess he had visited one of the sets and there was a character that wasn't in the book. And he was like, who is that? <laughs> no, you, you absolutely have to do that. And they're going to change character names, add new characters, change the dialogue, you know? So yeah, you definitely, if you're going to, and there's some authors who just won't option their books for that reason. You know, I think, I think it's interesting to see what somebody else can bring to something and what's, what they connect with in the material, which can be totally different than what I connected with. And that's okay. I mean, I got, so years ago, uh, my book Arranged was made into a short film and I got to go to set. They mostly filmed it in one day and I was there for most of the day. And that was a really cool experience. Like, walking into a set that was like the inside of my brain <laughs> made into real life, you know? Right. And I think that there's so much more opportunity for authors because there are so many more outlets of the main yes. movies. I mean, not just there's, big screen. Yeah. Like With TV. Yeah. There's definitely a glut of, in a good way, TV and an appetite for IP as they call it, right. um, which is, you know, buying up books and to right. adapt into television series yeah yeah I always love when I see like actors buying up you know like famous actors or actresses buying up the options for the book right right oh my god that's so odd because I you know I feel like I know them too and I'm like oh I can't wait to see what they do with it you know and us right. as readers we love seeing it up on the screen more than anything to criticize it so that we can say the book was better <laughs> that's just what we did. You know, I don't know. I, I know people who are like, won't even watch some things that are made of their favorite books, but I'm not like that. I think um, I just use them as different experiences. Right. Yeah. And sometimes for sure, it's not better. Sometimes it's just as good. And sometimes it's better. Yeah. You know, or it's richer. So yeah, yeah I'm always open to it, to tell you the truth. I like seeing it. And even if I am going to walk away and say the book was better, you know, us, us reader snobs, like we can be like, we read the book and you didn't. And we know. <laughs> But I still yeah, the difference is like I remember with Big Little Lies, I was watching it with my husband and he was right. like, What is going on here? And I'm like, Do you right. want me to tell you? Or because <laughs> you know? I read the book, I know what's happening, but you know, so I had friends with that show and they're like, I don't get it. I'm like, read the book. I'm not gonna, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think in the end he was like, So wait, yeah. what? Because <laughs> in it was abrupt in the book, but it was even more abrupt in the first season, right? right? That ending. Yeah. Yeah, not to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but the ending, which is the same as in the book, but it was much more abrupt. It felt and, more abrupt, yeah. And the expo because the explanation of why she did it wasn't there, and it was more explored in the second season. And so he yeah. was like, "Huh." <laughs> I'm like, well, it's because blah, 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 you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I can tell you why. I can tell you why, but I mean, the TV show thing to me is more interesting. Like there's a movie aspect because they've got to get everything right. into, you know, 120 minutes or whatever. Right, right, TV right. TV show or a mini series is definitely like, that's a very interesting concept to me. And I think, yeah, I think it allows you to sort of explore the book more fully and yeah. even explore some things that are just hinted at or not fully addressed in the book, but are there. Yes, definitely. I, that's what I, I think it's going to be. I think it has time to, so people aren't sitting there going, what? I don't understand. Like it has time right, right. for that a little bit, but well, thank you so much. And when, oh, when is the next one? I don't have a release date yet, maybe June of next year, but it's called Please Join Us. And it's about a woman who joins a networking group that turns sinister. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe cult vibes, things like that. So. Uh, I love your writing. I'll read anything. Oh, there. thank you. I love it <laughs> so much. Seriously. That's why I said like this book, when I tried to explain it to people, I'm like, just go get this book. And it's like, what's it about? It's like, don't worry about it. Don't, don't think about that. Just read it. <laughs> Don't worry about what it's about. Go on Who the cares? journey of the book with it. You know? <laughs> Who cares what it's about? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, about. it's suspenseful. You'll love it. It's so, so unique in its own way. I love. That's why I love your writing so much. So well, thank you. Show us the cover one more time and I will. There we go. Six. And you know, I just love seeing is the where does it open up? Like, is there a front flap? Yes. Yeah. So that's the Canadian. Oh. It has a front flap on it. The U.S. version's a beautiful hardcover. 
so oh that's odd I was like wait where's that red stripe coming from I don't yeah yeah (laughs) it's like all the blurbs inside it's all the blurb awesome Mm -hmm. well thank you so much Catherine thank you wait to see what it does it's already climbing those Amazon charts very fast so I'm very excited for you yes exactly (laughs) and we'll talk when the next one comes out definitely okay thanks so much take care